welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, founder of the Tudor Society and author of several Tudor history books. Now today we're going to go to Elizabeth I's reign. But on this day in Tudor history, the 22nd of October 1577, Henry Parker, 11th Baron Morley and a Roman Catholic exile, died in Paris. Morley had fled abroad after refusing to subscribe to Elizabeth I's Act of Uniformity and also after being implicated in the 1569 Rising of the North or the Northern Rebellion. Now, let me give you some facts about this lesser known Tudor man because you're probably wondering who on earth Parker or Lord Morley was. Well, his birth date is unknown, but it's thought to be around 1531, 1532. And he was the eldest son of Sir Henry Parker and his first wife, Grace Newport. He was also the grandson of Henry Parker, 10th Baron Morley, a man who had grown up in the household of Lady Margaret Beaufort, mother of King Henry VII, and a man who was also known for his literary translations. He was also the nephew of Jane Boleyn, Lady Rochford, wife of George Boleyn and sister-in-law of Queen Anne Boleyn. He was educated at Gonville Hall, Cambridge, and in October 1553, after the accession of Queen Mary I, Morley was made a Knight of the Bath in the celebrations surrounding her coronation. In November 1556, on the death of his grandfather, he became Baron Morley and attended his first parliament in December 1557. Then, in 1560, he was made Lord Lieutenant of Hertfordshire. He was married to Elizabeth Stanley, daughter of Edward Stanley, 3rd Earl of Derby, and Lady Dorothy Howard. Um, and she was also granddaughter of Thomas Howard, 2nd Duke of Norfolk, so she was quite a prominent lady. In 1561, he played host to Queen Elizabeth I for two days at his home, Allington Morley, in Great Hallingbury, Essex. In that same year, he was described by the Spanish ambassador in a letter to Philip of Spain as one of the best and most Catholic gentlemen of this kingdom and much attached to your majesty's service. Then in 1569, Morley refused to subscribe to Elizabeth I's Act of Uniformity, which had been passed by Parliament in 1559 and which was part of Elizabeth's religious settlement. His biographer, James Carley, writes that he refused it on the plea of being a nobleman. Then in that same year, he was implicated in that rebellion I mentioned, the Rising of the North, which was a rebellion led by Charles Neville, 6th Earl of Westmoreland, and Thomas Percy, 7th Earl of Northumberland. Now, these lords sought to depose Queen Elizabeth I and to replace her with Mary, Queen of Scots, who would uh, also marry the Duke of Norfolk, and then she would restore the Catholic faith as the faith of England. The rebellion actually failed, and due to being linked to this uh, rebellion, uh, Morley decided it best to flee England um, in early June 1570 and uh, go to the continent, where he settled in Bruges at first. In August 1570, he thought it best to write to the Queen after fleeing her kingdom, begging for her pardon, because of course he went without her license, without her permission, and uh, thought he'd explain why he'd left, uh, which he said was as a result of a scruple of conscience. Now, Elizabeth commanded him to return to England, but he ignored her command and spent the rest of his life on the continent, spending time in Bruges, Madrid, Lisbon, Paris, Venice, Antwerp and Maastricht, um, as well as Paris where he uh, died. Sorry, I did mention Paris there. In 1572, his estate was taken by the crown because of 
course, he'd uh, left England and had been disobedient to his queen. In March 1574, he and his brother Edmund were received by Philip of Spain in Madrid and given 600 ducats as a gift. Hmm, I bet Elizabeth wasn't best pleased with that. Now, Morley had left his family behind when he fled, and on Palm Sunday, 1574, his wife Elizabeth was arrested at her London home while she was hearing Mass. Their eldest son, Edward, had also uh, been arrested and had actually been imprisoned in the fleet in 1573. In September 1575, Morley's wife Elizabeth and the couple's daughter and their youngest son arrived in Antwerp. So they decided to uh, flee England as well. And in 1576, they were um, recorded as being with Morley in Maastricht. Morley died on this day in history in 1577 in the city of Paris and his eldest son Edward became 12th Baron Morley and in 1578 Morley's estate was restored to Edward as I said it had been the crowns. Now Morley's son Edward was um, a member of the commission who tried Mary Queen of Scots at Fotheringay Castle in October 1587 and his son William who became 13th Baron Morley and 4th Baron Monteagle was the man, he's gone down in history as the man who received an anonymous letter on the 26th of October 1605 warning him not to attend the opening of Parliament. He showed this letter to Robert Cecil, Earl of Salisbury, who in turn showed it to King James I, and it led to the discovery of the gunpowder plot, uh, yeah, the search of the cellars underneath the Houses of Parliament, and of course Guy Fawkes being caught red-handed with uh, all of that gunpowder. So I just thought I'd share that trivia with you because they are rather an interesting family, don't you think? So that's what happened on this day in Tudor history in the reign of Queen Elizabeth I in 1577. We have Morley dying while he was in exile, a Catholic exile in the city of Paris. A very interesting man and a very interesting family. Thank you for joining me. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking around about there. You can give this video a like if you've enjoyed it and you can hit the bell to be notified as videos go live, which they do on a daily basis. I'll be back with another Tudor history event for you tomorrow. See you then. Bye bye.